We're back, and I'm Brandy B, the community MP. And I'm Brandy G, the community NP. And together we are B and B, the, the community, community NPs. So, B, what are we gonna talk about today? Blood donation, blood donating blood. Okay. And I didn't realize that donating blood was a process, okay? Yeah. I have to be honest, I have never donated blood. Okay, we're adding that to her bucket list. Yes, I will donate blood this year. <laughs> so, the, but the definition. All right, so blood donation occurs when you voluntarily donate blood, they have your blood drawn. Mm -hmm. And you have it drawn because you, you are allowing them to take your blood to help other people. Right. It can be to help someone... Surgery, mm -hmm. a car accident, um, a transfusion, transplant, or someone with anemia. Correct. Yeah. Also, that blood can be used, can be broken apart, or could be how like the components of the blood, blood can, can be, be taken apart, yeah. and they can use it to make medications, right? And for research. Yep. So, lots of good reasons why to donate blood. Yes. So, but here's some interesting facts. 45 million patients need blood transfusion each year in the people. U.S. and Canada. 45 million. That's a lot oh, no, no, no. 4.5 million. Yeah. So, but that's still a lot. Yeah, 4.5 million is a lot. That is. So, 43,000 yeah. pints is the amount of blood donated each day in the U.S. and Canada. That's a lot of blood donated each day. It is. But that's good because yeah. that tells me that people are going out donating blood. Mm -hmm. So, I guess I got to join that number. Yeah, there's good people in the world. Someone needs blood every two seconds. <sighs> is that not crazy? That is. So, in a minute, what... 30 people, 30 people need blood. Jeez. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. And what what else? One pint of blood can save up to three lives. Oh, that's so good. So that's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay. So you just go donate and save save three lives. Another thing is that blood and platelets can't be manufactured. So in order to get blood and platelets, someone has to donate. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things now can be manufactured or they can recreate. But they can't recreate blood. Not yet, anyways. Yeah. I know that was so when <laughs> they start making blood, we'll be in trouble, okay? They can start making people next. <laughs> so there's some questions that you need to ask before donating me. So what are some of those questions that you know you must ask before someone donates blood? So we ask about, you know, like health and travel. Want to make sure that you're in good health and then yeah. make sure you haven't really traveled outside of the country. Um, we talk about medications that you're on. Okay. If you've been exposed to any, like, diseases that can be transmitted through the, the blood. blood. Yeah, okay. like HIV. Hepatitis. A right, yeah. Like that. Okay. Uh, you get your blood pressure checked before you give blood, as well as your temperature and your pulse. I guess they want to make sure that your blood pressure not too low. Mm -hmm. you, you know, make sure you're not dehydrated or mm -hmm. something like that. Because if your blood pressure is really low, you don't want to give blood. Correct, because then yeah. you're going to pass out. If you out. have a temperature, you don't want to give blood because you may be sick. You may have a virus. Mm -hmm. So I see why it's important to do the vital signs. Yeah. Okay. And so they also, they so they do a blood count just to make sure that you're not anemic or, okay. or that you don't need blood yourself. So I know that they do a blood count because I have patients who come to me. Mm -hmm. So because I guess they give them a, like a form for your primary care provider to, to fill out to say that it's okay to donate blood even mm -hmm. though they're anemic. So I don't have patients who come and bring me the form. It's like I was trying to donate blood, but they need you to fill out this form. I'm like, if you're anemic, you don't need to donate blood. <laughs> yeah. But they said you can clear me to, to donate blood. I'm like, nah, we gotta get you out, you know, of being anemic, yeah. and then you can donate blood. You probably need blood. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's talk about some of the blood types. We so there's there's a few blood types. So there's A positive and negative, B positive and negative, A B positive and negative, and O positive and negative. So the what what the blood centers love is like somebody that's O negative, okay. which is what my husband is. And so because that blood can be given to anyone. Okay. Okay. And the only other, you know, like if you're A B positive, then you can receive blood from anyone. So mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't know my blood type. So we'll ask the people once we go <laughs> donate blood together. We'll ask You know your blood type? Mm -hmm. What's your B positive. Okay. So you can't give blood from you can, you can't give blood to anyone. I can give blood to be positive people and be negative. Okay. No, just be positive. People. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So who can donate? All right. You must be in good health, like mm -hmm. Brandy said. Eighteen years or older. Um, you have to weigh at least one hundred and ten pounds. So you have to have some weight on you to donate blood. Check for me. <laughs> me <I'm>... too. <laughs> so you have to have a valid ID and an address. And I guess they want to know in case something go wrong, they can always contact you. Mm -hmm. Um, and you cannot have gotten any tattoos or piercings in the past four months. Within four months of donating blood. I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm in the clear for now. 
<laughs> and I guess because getting tattoos and piercings, you at risk for, you know, viral, viral diseases. diseases yeah, like, yeah. Hepatitis. Yeah, so that's why. So why sh- you should not donate blood when be? So if you have had HIV or AIDS mm-hmm. or had sex with someone who's tested positive for HIV or AIDS in the past three months okay. and then have used or taken any drugs. On um, money? Yeah. No, no, no. Um, needle. Oh, use drugs that are... In, injectable drugs, yeah. not prescribed by <laughs> not it. insulin. Yeah, not, not insulin. insulin. You can take insulin, like so heroin and other. You know, if you share needles, and right. you know, yeah. with, with one of, someone, someone else, yeah. you shouldn't donate blood. Yeah, okay. and then um, and if you've taken money or drugs or for as a form of payment for sex in the past three months, don't um, donate. No, don't no. donate. <laughs> no, if you had syphilis or gonorrhea within the past three months, you can't donate. Um, if you have been in like juvenile detention, jail, um, or prison, but you had to be there for like three days consecutively mm-hmm. within the past twelve months, you can't donate. So I wonder why the time is so long. I know. I get. I don't know. Twelve months. I know why. Because everything else is three, about three, like three, three to four, four months. months. But twelve months. Yes. If you was in prison, you cannot donate. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. So, no. Okay. Of course, if you have a disease like Ebola, any type of viral diseases, you can't donate blood. Right. And I think that's what they were testing, you know, for when they ask about travel, just to make sure you don't have any of those yes. diseases that you would typically get if you've traveled out the country. Yeah. And so one thing that I thought was interesting is that I saw that it was like if a man who had sex with a man within the past three months, they can't donate. And if a woman has sex with a man who has sex with a man in the past three months, she couldn't donate. So I within three months. So yeah. that was on a real. So, so I guess website. that makes sense because it puts you at higher risk. Um, well, they say that you're at higher risk if um, you ha- if males have sex with males okay. of contracting like HIV. But mm-hmm. it just in this time, it yeah. just seems like something that should change. Yeah, because yeah. it's common for males to have sex with mm-hmm. males. Yeah. There, I mean, there's males that are married to each other, so yeah. obviously they having sex. Well, hopefully. <laughs> but yeah. So um, don't donate if you have fever, enlarged lymph nodes, sore throat, rash, yeah. or if you're taking PrEP for yeah. HIV. So yeah. any of the medicines that you take to prevent from getting HIV, if you've taken them in the last three months, mm-hmm. you cannot donate, donate blood. True. Okay. So what do you do the day before donating, donating blood? Get get a good night's rest. <laughs> yes. Get eight hours of sleep the night before you donate. Yes. Eat a healthy breakfast and or lunch if your appointment is like later. Don't skip a meal. No, no skip. Because you were faint. <laughs> you yeah. were faint. So don't skip a meal. And then, you know, eat a good complex meal like proteins, okay. complex carbohydrates, something that's going to fill you up. And then uh, what else? Drink water. Yeah. So if you drink more water, it's gonna be easier for them to draw blood because it's gonna be easier to find the vessels, the mm-hmm. veins to draw draw the blood from. So drink water. Um, like you say, you wanna do like fish, mm-hmm. beans, cheese, mm-hmm. something you know, some with some substance. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, drinking water also will help prevent you from passing out too. So I didn't realize there was a process when mm-hmm. donating blood. So you got to register. Hopefully now you can register online. Mm-hmm. They want you to bring your ID. They want you to bring your medications. They want you to they want to know if you traveled outside mm-hmm. the country. Mm-hmm. Um, then I mean, then they take they do like a little mini, mini physical on you, basically. Yeah. They do that, and then they draw your blood. So it's like going to the doctor. But look like they get a um, a refreshment or something. <laughs> <laughs> You get a refreshment. <laughs> when I was reading it, say like once you donate, um, they may give you a refreshment or something after you donate the blood. Mm-hmm. I, I guess the what I don't know to reward you. No, <laughs> it's to, it's to keep you. You know, like you just gave a pint of blood, so it's just to kind of keep you from feeling dizzy yeah. or lightheaded or anything yeah. like that. So yeah, the refreshment alone is like okay, what type of refreshment right? it is? But yeah, but so but that's that's in a nutshell with donating blood. Yeah. So. I think I'm gonna donate blood. Like I yeah, really think I'm gonna donate blood. For sure. Yeah. So we're we're gonna do it together. All right. So as we always say, this information, um, this information was taken from the American Red Cross um website, redcrossblood.org. Okay. Mm-hmm. This information is not to take the place of your primary care provider. You go and see your primary care providers. This information is for you can spark a conversation within yourselves or with family members yeah. or friends. Mm-hmm. So 
Yeah. We just want our community yes. to be educated. Yes. Just so that you can make informed decisions. That is yeah. our whole goal. Yes. Yes. So well, why be? Because community see, is our, our beauty. beauty. And remember, guys, as we always say, like, like share, share, subscribe to us on all platforms. Yes. Uh, Facebook. B&B. Yeah. What is it? B and B, the community and peace. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Yes. Yes. So thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Okay.